Um, hey, we're going to go ahead and get started, you guys. I'm super excited. Um, a lot of you came from uh, Apollo and some of the stuff that they've sent out. I know some of you guys have come uh, from the Blissful Prospecting crew, so it's great to have everyone here. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jason Bay. I run Blissful Prospecting, uh, and we help reps and sales teams who love landing big meetings with their prospects, but hate when they send cold emails that don't get responses or make cold calls and don't really feel good about what they're saying and confident in that. And that's what the topic is going to be about today is all about cold calling. Uh, and I'm super excited for Rashmi because she is the director of upmarket at Apollo, uh, the, which is my tool of choice when it comes to uh, sales engagement. And she has a lot of experience uh, doing outbound, running outbound teams, and especially uh, helping companies with their go-to market and moving up market strategy. Uh, we've had a couple of calls prepping for this webinar, and I'm super excited for the content that she's got today. But uh, Rashmi, welcome to the webinar. It's great to, great to collaborate with you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So I thought it'd be kind of good uh, just to do a uh, you know kind of quick icebreaker before we get into the uh, the content today. How did you like get into sales? Do you remember much about like your first sales job and like what you sold? Just to give everyone some quick context before we dig in today. Yeah, well, I didn't start my career in sales. I actually started my career in law. I practiced as a lawyer for a couple of years, and then uh, I just really wanted to know. I just really wanted to be in, in you know, an entrepreneurial scene. I wanted to be in the thick of business, and I was like, "What is the most transferable skill that I have with my background?" And you know, as far as I could understand, you're building a product or still selling it. You're in the heart of things, like yep. that to really learn. And then I was like, "Yeah, let's 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 do sales now." And uh, yeah, my first my first sales job was actually with uh, selling a uh, trucking software uh, oh, wow. to the U.S. market. And yeah, I was I was talking to truckers uh, and and selling software to them. Uh, you can imagine what an adoption curve that was. Um, yeah, yeah the industry of disruption was very cool. That's really interesting because uh, I work with several clients that kind of you know sell technology into you know, industries that are a little more traditional, I guess, is a way you could describe it, where they've maybe been doing the same things for the last 20 years. Yeah. And the thought of doing something different is not really something that they think about. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for the topic today. Before we dig in, you guys, uh, uh, some uh, several people are asking if this will be recorded. It definitely is uh, recording right now. We'll send out the recording to you afterwards, sometimes later today. There's also a Q&A button. Uh, so if you look at the bottom of the screen in Zoom, there's a Q&A button. Please direct all of your questions into the Q&A. Otherwise, it's just going to be madness for us to keep up with the chat. There's a ton of people. We have like 660 people on today. So we got a big group. So use that Q&A button to ask any questions. We'll make sure to get to as many as we can. But without further ado, Rashmi, um, you want to go ahead and take it away? Share your screen. You got some slides for us. And uh, let's dig in. I'm super excited for this. Awesome. Let's do it. There we go. And maybe let us know in the chat, you guys, give us a yes. Can you see the screen? Is everything working all right there? Just to make sure. Yep. Okay, cool. We're good to go, Rashmi. Awesome. Cold calling. How do we make it fun, interesting, and insanely productive? So um, here's a statistic that I'm, I want to throw out there. Like first up, when we talk about cold calling and, you know, who's excited about it? The, this, this survey basically tells us about 63% of their sales reps are saying that cold calling is the worst part of their job. And let me tell you, like the sentiment from all the people that I've worked with, the reps that I've worked with, the sales team that I've helped in my career, the sentiment is, is pretty, pretty widely reflected. Nobody, uh, you yeah. know, pretty widely says, yeah, I love cold calling. It's, it's a rare view. It's interesting. Um, but I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to know from the group out there here too, like, you know, do they consider that cold calling is the best part of their job or worst part of their job? But this is a, this is the sentiment that's out there. It's almost like eating broccoli and like brown rice and like, you know, chicken breast or something every day. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. So some people in the, in the chat are like, I love cold calling. Some people that's say it's fun. the worst. Well, 30, we also have like that 37%. That's very excited yeah. about. 
Necessary Evil, quite interesting. Uh I don't mind it. It's the most important part of my job. Uh Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but the the fact is that cold calling is is definitely one of those things, like somebody out here said, it's a necessary evil, I wouldn't quite say, but it's, that's so core to your job. But for some reason, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hesitation around it, uh, especially for people who are just starting in the role, et cetera. So, um, yeah. I think I'm interested to know from the group as well, like um, what's what's the biggest channel uh, challenge you guys have had when it comes to cold calling? Yeah, let us know in the chat, you guys. This is really great. I'm loving the participation. Let us know what's your biggest challenge personally with cold calling? What do you experience? Um, with me? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, cold calling was really difficult in the beginning because I was trying to figure out what, how, how, how can I get people to talk to me on the phone? Yeah. You know, as much as I really wanted to do it, uh, I, I just kind of really expected everyone to want to talk to me exactly back. But the, 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 the question was, how do I keep them on the phone? Because people are super, super busy. <laughs> yeah. It's uh yeah. And the reason I ask is that sounds very similar to, I don't know if you're looking at the chat here, mm-hmm. <laughs> you see any themes, Rashmi? <laughs> in the chat it's pretty <laughs> we're just getting bombarded with stuff on our end I some know. of you guys are chatting to just the panelists so you maybe can't see uh, if you click panelists and attendees in the chat everyone can see what you're what you're doing but uh they hide yeah, it's, from it's, me it's... because i'm a dirty dirty salesperson yep it's time consuming absolutely yeah how do you get them to not hang up on you yeah this this is all sounding really nobody picks up the phone yep, yep. That's another one. Handling rejection. Yes, there's a lot of rejection that comes with it. Yeah, yeah this people is great. are getting off the phone more these days. Awesome. Oh, fear of rude behavior. Yep, people can be rude when you're taking time from their day and they're not expecting it. Navigating assistance. Yep. Yeah, seeing a lot of that with gatekeepers and assistants. Um, let's keep moving. Yeah, we're yep. definitely going to cover all of this stuff today, you guys. Excellent. So, uh, so why why do it? It's painful. There's all these really difficult challenges with cold calling. What is the value of cold calling? Why is it so important? Why should we even do it at all? We have a lot of mediums now to reach out to people, to connect with them. There, there are a lot of things that do work in terms of you know, uh, getting in front of your prospect, being able to speak to them. But here's the thing, um, in, in the survey that I've linked here, as much as, much as decision makers like to say, oh, I hate being cold called. The, the phone the phone is just like, don't, don't call me. They hang up, they can be rude. All, as much as you might encounter that behavior, when it comes to actually people who are in a buying mood, who are in that decision-making frame, uh, they, they do get, they do wanna get contacted on the phone. Like their time is precious in, and they get bombarded with emails. It doesn't really stick in their attention as much as you might think. But most of the people who are decide, like decision makers, managers, and you'll see like as, as it gets higher, like directors and C-levels, like if you're able to get on the phone, be snappy, like, and if they are in that framework of actually being in a decision-making mode, they do want to be contacted on the phone. It quickly allows them to take, like say things, take a decision, get information and get off the phone quickly. You know, it's not a bad mode for busy people either. And here's some other, you know, funnel statistics that you need to maybe think about when you're trying to decide, okay, is cold calling really worth it? Like, what, what does it really take, right? And yeah, yeah it, it's time consuming. It takes many attempts to get through to a prospect. That is a reality. On average, when we're talking on a day-to-day basis, how many cold calls is a rep, like who's focused on prospecting and creating opportunity pipeline? Like, or on average, they're performing 33 calls a day. And that takes a lot of mental attention. Um, your success rate is also kind of like that. That looks that looks low, right? Like two percent, really. Success rate is two percent, but ultimately, as 
as salespeople, we're looking, we're looking at the funnel. So when you're taking all of these variables and you're building that funnel out of like the number of calls that you do on a total week and you figure out like how many opportunities did I actually create from this amount of activity and then, um, you know, consider, and this is important, the average deal size of the opportunity that you're getting, right? Like if you're aiming at the right market, that's that's generating the right, right value of opportunity. And basically it's a math equation. You, you consider all of these variables, you, 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 you sub subtract the amount of like resources and time. And the ROI calculation is the, the thing that will make most sense to you. Like somebody said in the chat, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a cornerstone of sorts, right? So ultimately there's an entire function, there's an entire model on inside sales, like, you know, that, that so many companies have adapted and they, the reason is this ROI po positive calculation works out. And if it didn't, that's, that's when, you know, that, that model is not something they attempt anymore, but this, this is the core of why cold calling might work for you or might, why it may not. So, um, when does it make sense to cold call? Like, what should you be looking to get out of a cold call? And very often it's it's things like, you know, you want to validate an idea, you have an idea that this, this is something that you want to get direct, you know, customer feedback from. Obviously, we're just talking about how do we push up that pipeline. Um, there's Real another- Real quick, Rashmi? Yeah? With the uh, validating an idea, just for some clarification, yeah. is part of that too, maybe validating almost like a customer segment or a persona- Exactly. Um, that you're trying to sell into or a new product offering, like any of that kind of stuff. What, what, what type of things might people be thinking about validating? Yeah, exactly all of those things. I think basically the, the idea validation pro aspect here is, you know, most, most of the best salespeople that I know, they're always trying like new things. And first of all, the best way to do it, whether when you're figuring out a strategy or a play of how to go after a customer, there are various elements that you break down and you hypothesize that this could work and I could I could get you know x x amount of opportunities out of this. But basically, your quickest way to validate that idea and and every you know uh, disruptive business models like you know book who's going to tell you this is basically go and ask your customer, get in front of them and literally ask. Yeah. Um, and nothing works better. I, I guess, you know, you could go like the, the old school way of doing this was go door to door, but that's, that's a different yeah. world now, but yeah, like get out there and get, get your direct feedback. The other yeah, cold, part. Oh, yeah. sorry. Just one more thing. Cause uh, I, I think what you're saying is so important in that, like, if you send cold emails, if people don't respond to them, you get zero feedback on like what you're doing. You just get a no response. And you could pick up the phone and even if it's a little tough to get a hold of people, you could get feedback within a few hours or at least within that day around, hey, does this persona work or not? What do they think of the messaging? You yeah. know, is this going to be a good uh, customer segment for us to like, you can figure that stuff out in a couple of days and email, you know, worst case scenarios that people don't respond and you don't really get any feedback that's very useful at all. Exactly. Like there's a forced mechanism when you're on the phone with somebody, like they, they, they respond to you. There, you know, the, the, the fact is on an email, it's very easy to be passive. And for most people, they do tend to be passive. It takes an extra effort to like really want to come back and like reply or say something. Um, and more and more, we're kind of getting used to that sitting behind a screen and just consuming kind of mode. And when you get people on the phone, you get a reaction, you get something, you know, that's feedback to what yeah. you have going out there. Um, this is another thing that we extensively rely on at Apollo to validate, you know, messaging, uh, because, you know, you might have a certain idea that you're executing in your email sequence and you're monitoring the response and interested rates. But really, uh, like I said, people may or may not actually reply on email, but you'll get a very quick messaging feedback when, you know, when, when you use that messaging in a, in, in, on the phone when you're with people. And, some of the best subject lines that I've got, even for my email sequences, are directly lifting some of the phrases and some of the things that people have said to me when I'm on the phone, whether they're positive or negative. And it's just like the, the goal after, uh, after all in a subject line is to be provocative, right? You want that person to be like, oh, what's that? And to open and read what you have to say. 
And very often, like getting things like that out of the phone calls that you've made and you've heard when you've uh, spoken to your customer, you know, segment, that's, that's, that's a gold mine. And yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, you'll notice that companies that have larger deal sizes also, uh, you know, spend more personalized attention. They distribute their touches on multiple channels. And people want to feel like they're not just getting blasted by, you know, email sequences, et cetera. The, when, when this sort of personalized attention is sort of curated towards a person, then they have to kind of acknowledge that, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be, somebody's trying to reach me and then basically respond to, to you know, to, to, that, uh, to that attention. So, um, I mean, ultimately there's, it's, it's all about a mind, mindset of learning uh, if you're about to go into cold calls thinking, I'm going to do some selling on the phone today. Yeah, that could work. There's a lot of people who do that, but it's just easier on you when you approach this about like how, how it, uh, with a learning mindset, uh, with an idea of like, how, how do I, uh, you know, figure out how, how this company works or what do they care about or what does this person care about? And trying to uncover some of the pain points, like we sometimes when you call someone on the phone, they might have a title that looks like they're a decision maker, but you would not know when you're until you're on the phone with them. They're like, actually, I'm not, but it's this other person. So there's all this like, you know, iceberg of knowledge underneath that you you, you just miss out on unless you're, uh, you know, uh, you're seeking this out on cold calls. And ultimately, this allows you to insert yourself in the day to day world of your actual customer. And then, you know, there's an immersion in their language and the way they, you know, they speak about their, their, their own company and their uh, industry. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this later, but one of the best things that you can do as you cold call is to really pick up the way people speak about themselves, their companies, and literally use that same language when the next time you call them or you call somebody else from the same company or the industry, you'll, you'll basically be a part of that tribe and you'll be received better. Okay, so let's talk about when it can be unproductive, right? Um, oops. Did I breathe? Is it working? Well, that slide for some, some reason isn't show, showing when I'm, you know, sharing the full screen, but uh, yeah, here's, here's the thing, things that actually bring down your cold calling time. And if you have these things sorted out, it's gonna basically get you much, much more prepared, like, you know, to, to do it right. Um, most often people who are doing cold calling who are like, oh, I feel like I'm wasting my time. It's, it's, it's a combination of like being like organization, like knowing exactly what you're gonna do and like, preparing like a very structured way to do it because your time is precious. You want to optimize it in the right direction and know that you're getting the most value out of the time you're spending doing this. And then there's also the preparation aspect. There's just so many things that if you're just well prepared beforehand, you'll spare yourself a lot of pain. But ultimately, there's this fundamental thing is that cold calling is tedious when you're doing work like a robot. The goal when you're doing cold calling is, you know, to not get so stuck in the things like getting, getting the stuff that you want to do out of the way, but rather I, I would actually say, and I've, I've seen this being mentioned somewhere else, you, you, sh you shouldn't be a robot. You should be playing a role. You should be, you should think of yourself like an actor who's playing a role and you're performing a sort of a function that's a role of a person who's curious, who's interested to know what's going on in the other person's world and is a participant and a listener. And ultimately, even if you've got all this in place, um, what determines if you're successful is whether you reach that person. And uh, the biggest time sink I feel is, you know, navigating phone trees, not reaching that person, getting wrong phone numbers, basically not having mobile numbers. It's really one of those things that that can really boost how much, you know, boost your productivity when you're doing cold calling. Some of the stats that I just pulled from like this closed.io blog is that, and this is, I, I actually was telling Jason this, the, I've seen this validated when we've done cold calling in our, um, in our own business model. Um, 
if your reach rate is below 15%, then yeah, that that's the amount of time that, you know, you're kind of like able to reach a person when you're doing cold calling. Then, yeah, then so it's people, right. just because some people are asking questions, the reach rate is when someone actually picks up the phone, right? And you have a conversation with someone. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Reach rate is when you when someone picks up the phone. And if you're at 20 to 30%, you're on track. And anything over 30%, that's like amazing. We should really be understanding what you're doing and what you're doing really amazingly well. And this might seem a bit steep to you guys, right? Like 15%, hey, I'm only able to reach like barely 2% of the people. They're all hanging up on me. You know, that's that's what people will say. The point is like mobile numbers are, are, are gold. And there's a lot of sources that get you mobile numbers. Apollo basically gets a lot of, uh, you know, our, we support a lot of sales teams and everybody tells us like, ultimately the thing that makes the difference from, for them is that the fact that they get mobile numbers from Apollo is one of those things that they value us most for. Because at the end of the day, you wanna know that even if you have all your variables in place, that final step of being able to, you know, when somebody picks up the phone and they are that right person and you have a chance to talk to them, then that's that's what matters. Um, and I'll go ahead and course. drop in Rashmi real quick yep. too, just a link. For, if you guys are not using Apollo or haven't checked it out before, I dropped in a link. We got a, a special link for you guys too, to check it out. Mobile phone numbers, I cannot stress, like the clients that we work with, which is like, you know, BDR or AE teams of like three people up to like 150, um, getting mobile phone numbers is like the biggest difference in, it'll literally like four or five X your reach rate uh, by being able to like contact someone on their phone. So if you don't have mobile numbers, make sure to check that out. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, especially after COVID has, you know, hit the planet, uh, mobile numbers are going to be everything, you know, uh, different in your in your sales pipeline. So um, these are some of like the reasons why, you know, it might be like the most contributory factors for for, you know, uh, unproductive cold call time. Um, but there are other things that you can actually, you know, do because those are the obvious sources of pain. And there's other things that you can do to make it make it interesting for yourself. Um, not everybody is like an extrovert and like, you know, e excited to get on the phone and like be out there, like making the calls. And the, it's interesting because I would also consider myself not exactly an extrovert. I would say that, you know, it takes some energy for me to be out there on, on the phone. But uh, in my opinion, um, the the way you make this, uh, you know, not not a painful, uh, not a painful activity, but an, but a fun activity is to basically f make make this an intellectual curiosity exercise. Make it interesting for yourself when you ask like, yourself. There's there's certain questions for which you want answers to, and you you're approaching this entire problem with like I have this much amount of time here's all the organizational, you know, stuff that I'm already ready with. And here's some of the questions that I want to answer for myself. And then with those hypothetical questions, then jump into that activity with that framework. And then you're basically getting through all of those things that somebody mentioned, like rejection, being told no, getting hung up on. Those are just small events that are happening in your quest to answer some of these questions that you've sought out for yourself. And you're organized in that amount of time as just dealing with those little challenges as just events that are happening in that time, but you're moving through your process towards the end result, and which is basically answering some of the initial questions that you set out for yourself. Um, uh, you know, whether it's about, can, does the segment work? Uh, how many directors generally pick up the phone in this industry uh, or, or uh, you know, um, it, are, are sales operations people really taking decisions on, you know, XYZ software, or is it somebody else? And these are some of the questions that you might genuinely have about your business, like about, uh, you know, that you don't know the answers for, and you basically frame a few questions that you also just want to know the answers to, and then jump into the cold calling session as, as a productive way to inform yourself while being able to inform your audience, like, or uh, your prospect, if they do, you know, agree to give you those, those quick minutes and, and talk to you. Um, I mean, this is, this is key, like for all to eliminate most of like all the things that bring you down, the unpredictive activities that bring you down, 
uh, there's just some things that you can do in process and preparation to to set yourself up for you know you know the least amount of pain. Uh, organizing by segments, getting your tools up, and making sure that the workflow is smooth for you. You're not unnecessarily getting stuck in little things that are just tedious. Making sure that you're automating things that you don't really need to kind of sit there and try to um, yeah don't don't do manual work when it's automatable mobile numbers again. And that's that's all the stuff that you do to prep yourself so that you're in the time that you're cold calling, you're not getting stuck in all these little, little things, which can be very frustrating. And then there's, see, uh, yeah. One other thing I wanna stress, Rashmi, just cause I'm keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, even if you're only able to find 20, 25% of your prospects have mobile phone numbers, what you're suggesting here, uh, Rashmi, is that's a way that you could segment your call time too. You could say, hey, even even though that I can't find mobile phone numbers for everyone, which by the way, you guys, Apollo is is one of many data sources, but all, not none of them are going to get you ninety percent mobile phone numbers. <laughs> so, um, like that's just kind of how it works. But if you can segment and say, hey, here are the twenty percent of people I do have phone numbers for. Let me focus all of my cold calling time on those, yep. and then maybe do email heavy on the rest. That's kind of what you're suggesting, right? Is like how to think of your time in terms of what, what can I do that's gonna have the most likelihood of someone picking up? Exactly. Ultimately, the metric that will really matter, like that, that is indicative of how productive your session is, is like the most valuable time that you spend in cold calling is the number of minutes that you're actually speaking to your, to, to your uh, prospect. And even if it's something like negative, uh, or they're not exactly saying, you know, the, what you want to hear, like, oh, yes, set me up for this, or, uh, you know, I, I'd love to buy that uh, offering that you're you're bringing up. It's it's more about how much talk time, uh, call, conversation time are you able to manage to get. And yes, setting, focusing on people where you're able to get through them, for example, with mobile numbers, figuring out exactly, you know, what they care about, good segmentation, uh, figuring out what to say that like generate an interesting conversation with these people and then getting the right tools in place so that you don't get stuck on the little things so that you can just move through it in a very smooth way and focus on the things that are important. Right. Um, so we talked about segmentation and this is this is something I wanted to throw out there because um, most of the time when we're talking about segments, people are thinking, oh, that means like, how large is this company? What is the title and industry of this person? And, you know, that's that's kind of the, the basic extent of like how we think about segments. Uh, that's definitely very, very good way to kind of really, you know, uh, put a pin on who you're speaking with on a very, in a very quick fashion. But the thing is, the segmentation is not just like to to kind of you know group your group your group your prospects. Uh, you know, it's not just important for that. It also gives you a lot of subject matter on on things to talk about when you are on the phone, right? So this in itself just sorts people out in interesting you know things that you can talk about because of characteristics that they've displayed. Um, and, and you can see these segments and you can see that, uh, you know, if somebody's had a job change event, they've recently changed a job, you have a, a, a conversation topic right there. Like when you're calling people who've just changed a job, they're in the first three months of their, uh, you know, new job. This is when people are taking decisions on new software, new tools, they're putting things into place. Timing is right. And you can basically open with a congratulatory message and like say, hey, I noticed you're into this role. You have a natural conversation that's bubbling up right there. Similarly, when there's been a fundraise event, or if you've, and, and this is something like even prior conversations, even if people have, you know, closed, lost an opportunity in your pipeline before, there's, you know, that's that's a prior connect that you, you know, you can always come back to and say, hey, have things changed? What's new at your company? And th these are things that also allow people to feel like they're not just like a number of, you know, on your list, but, you know, you're you're approaching them with a conversation topic. When you're on that phone, you're they're not just getting hit with, a, a, you know, a, 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 a sales pitch. They're rather, there's a conversation topic that's centered around them their activities, their priorities, their verticals, their uh, recent changes in their world. And these are things that I encourage everyone to think about is like segment more than just by industry title, et cetera, like segment more by the priorities of that person 
Um, and yeah, like here's some of the ideas that, you know, we've just thrown out there. Yeah, this uh, is, I cannot stress this part enough either. Like this takes care of a lot of like the, the personalization and the prep. If you do a really good job of segmenting and you can even segment further into, hey, all of the personas that are VP of marketing that I have mobile phone numbers for. And maybe it's only a list of 25 people, yep. but that likelihood that you're going to get a hold of those people. And then when you get them on the phone to have a really specific message for them without having to do all this individual research. Um, I, again, I just want to reiterate, is that kind of what you're suggest, suggesting here, Rashmi, in terms of like how you engineer your workflow? Exactly, exactly. Because yeah. now you're one by one, you're eliminating all those factors of frustration yeah. that, you know, that come up. And most often they're, they're, if you group them all together and you're doing, you know, hundreds of dials, but without any organization, it can be incredibly frustrating. But this organized approach is basically setting you up with a very logical way to approach a person on the phone and have a normal conversation with them. And this is the thing that will also have this logic in your own mind about, I tried to reach this person for this reason and they were not available at this time. And there's a natural act, there's a natural instinct to even follow up with that person, you know, through many attempts. And that's not a frustrating thing because it's, you're genuinely interested to reach out. And um, very often you're even mixing multiple channels. It's not just the phone, uh, but you're mixing, you know, an email message with a phone or a LinkedIn touch with a phone, et cetera. And, the more you you sort of like concentrate your your conversation on one personalization you know uh, idea maybe that you've left, probably got from you know segmenting this way uh, there's a consistency in the way you're trying to reach the person and they also kind of get this idea that yeah like this is a genuine reach out it's not just somebody just slam dialing my phone um, yeah so the other uh, the other things to get in place are your tools and systems. I, I talked about this earlier, uh, you know, in that first slide, uh, but getting just some of the systems in place is also going to streamline a lot of like the painful activity, uh, you know, depending on, you know, your, uh, your market, your setups, you can, you can sort of pick and choose what CRM is right for you, what dialer is right for you, et cetera. Um, but in these, I would say, are like some of the basics. Uh, there are, uh, you know, software solutions out there that bundle more than one together. Um, but ultimately, like if you get your, you know, these these tools into place, there's just some operational aspects that can really help out. Like, for example, if you do get a, you know, dialer software in place, make sure that your call notes are synced, to, synced up to your CRM in a smooth way so that, you know, all the information that you gather while you're call, calling, you know, is something that you can carry forward and reuse. Map out all your, um, oh yeah, like another one is, um, you know, at the end of a call, you need to have like a, a list of dispositions uh, that you pick from. And those dispositions should be the kind of dispositions that make it really obvious on what the next step should be based on, you know, what the outcome of the call is. And then basically, uh, when you have this organization in place, that's, you know, for, at a tools and systems level, uh, the next steps becomes also really easy to administer because you already have them organized in a super efficient way. And they're not just like random texts that you need to go back and read and understand and process, but it's rather, uh, you know, more, more, more systemized. One, um, one more advanced tip is like, there are a lot of uh, dialers out there that, that enable power dialing and something called parallel dialing. And these are a little more expensive, uh, you know, depending on what you enable. Um, but what they do is they, they basically just keep dialing for you. And then they only turn out, they, they only turn on your microphone or they, they only connect you when a prospect has picked up at the other end. So your conversation time is only active conversation time when, when, you're, when you're actually speaking on the phone or when somebody is, is, has picked up on the other line. So this is some you know, interesting software uh, and systems out there that you know, people might wanna think about. Right, um, now we come to the important piece, right? We've talked about how to segment and how to think about your customer, you know, on, on, a, on a broader level. 
Um, but now when we're talking about call prep, uh, now this is very much in the line of like, imagine that person right in front of you and you're trying to have a conversation and then basically build back from that. Like talking to strangers is hard anyway. Talking to strangers when you're interrupting them during a day is harder because, you know, it's just a social activity that's just, you know, odd to do. So you need to kind of make this, you know, you, you need to kind of uh, approach this cold call as, you know, from that perspective, you're about to interrupt a person who's going about their day, what's the smoothest way to do it? And what's the thing that will keep them interested to speak to you? Because most people are, they, they, they're not like really open to just starting a conversation with a stranger. So uh, it's, it, it, it becomes even harder when you've picked up the phone and you immediately start talking about yourself and your company and what you're doing. And then like a, an overload of information from a person who really wasn't expecting it at all. So the goal when you're calling somebody is to kind of first intro yourself really well, like explain very quickly, like why you're calling them. And this should be pretty short. And then it should also be framed around why them, like it should be about them and not about you. I'm calling you because I need this is not the way you should go about this, but you should make it about them. Like I'm calling you because you are X, Y, Z, right? Uh, draw from the compelling reason of like those segmentation ideas that I just shared. And then keep in mind, like the first 30 seconds of your cold call, they're not about, I'm going to sell to this person. It's about winning the next two or three minutes of them willing to listen to you. So you need to basically say, and this might take a few things, you know, tries to test out and figure out what's the right thing to say, but your goal here is to allow, like basically feel that, that uh, basically win from that person, the willingness to listen to you for the next few minutes. Once you've got that, um, you need to also get them talking quickly. The more it's a conversation, the more likely that you know, you're drawing them into a topic and that's, that's something you wanna focus on. If you're doing all the talking, it's gonna be tough. Um, you should talk about your value prop because they, that, that is the reason that you're calling. Make sure that it's snappy. It's very like fifth grader level of you know, explanation to what it is you offer. Avoid the jargon, especially when you're catching people unexpectedly throwing a lot of jargon in is going to hurt your case, not help it. And then basically at fifth grader level language, explain what your value proposition is. And the biggest mistake that I've seen reps doing when they're, you know, preparing their script is they, they lace in questions which are very yes or no. And most often for unexpected things, people just say no. This is just the nature, like I can share a lot of like books that, that talk about this concept. I don't know how many of you out there have read this uh, psychologist called Robert Cialdini, but Good he, book. yeah, uh, persuasion. So he, he basically talks about this, this concept that, you know, uh, if, if you're, it's, it's just easier. Most people say no to something that, you know, they, they're, that's new, that they're being caught off guard with. So when you're asking those questions that, that are about winning that, you know, prospects time, ask them a question that that's more open ended, something that they can't answer with a yes or no, but they need to use more words to answer your question. And then most importantly, I think this is another thing I've seen your idea usually at the end of a cold call is to sell a meeting to explore and then focus on what's in it for them. And it's not about, oh, we are doing this, we are doing that. It, it should always be about are, are you going to, you know, are you going to cut costs? Are you going to, uh, are you going to save time? Are you going to increase productivity? There's a number of things that you can talk about on what they will get. And when I say what's in it for them, I mean that person in that role, what will they get? To some extent, you can focus on what will the company get, but it is much more helpful, like to your case, to frame it in what is in it for that particular person in that role? Like what, what will they get? And, um, when you focus on the goal of, you know, that's, that's much more softer that, you know, some time so that they can, they can judge or basically uh, uh, some information that you might be seeking, right? If they're, you know, they, they only know partially the answer, then you wanna know, oh, you already have this competitor that you're using. What are the things that 
that you get from the, them that you really like. Later in this presentation, I actually have a list of open-ended questions that you can try out during a cold call that makes it easy to get some you know, conversation going. But um, ultimately, the, 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 the more time you have with the person on this cold call um, that's focused on them talking about themselves and their job, the, the, the better you're doing the job, that this is, this is what you're doing right. And let's say that you do go in and they have this willingness to sort of like help you with, with the thing that you want, right? Oh, I'd love to schedule a meeting, a quick quick 15 minutes to explain, you know, how we might be able to help you. Um, get, to, get to those steps quickly, don't, don't linger. And, and basically set, set, up, set up the day, the, the time very quickly right there. And once they say yes to a meeting, get it set up really quickly. And they already said yes, say thank you, hang up, give them their time back. Thank, yeah, and wrap it up. <laughs> um, Should we take a look at the framework? Yeah. Here, let me grab the screen. So everything that Rash me has talked about, uh, what we wanna do here is give you guys kind of like a buttoned up framework and dig into some of like the how components of that. Um, can you guys see the uh, piece of paper, my hand moving? Give me a, a yes in the chat if you guys can see that. Yeah, cool. Okay. All right. So let's get into the cold calling portion of it. Um, everything that Rashmi uh, talked about was killer here. And what I figured it'd be kind of cool to do is help you kind of visualize you know, some of this stuff and how it looks in the cold call. So we essentially have like three parts of your cold call. So there's like the intro the hook, and then the close. And Rashmi, um, with the intro, um, I'm totally on the same page with you there. It's, you know, that first, you know, 15 to 30 seconds is your goal essentially what you're focused on, like getting the person talking. Is that, 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 is that the biggest thing? Like introduce yourself, get to the point to where they can start talking. Yeah, because the minute, you, you know, the, the first 15 to 30 seconds, are going to tell you whether you even have a chance to even say anything. So you're basically winning some time. That's that's the goal of the first 30 seconds. It's not let me get out, out as much information out of my mouth as possible. It's more about how can I get some, how can I win some time from this person? So yeah. you can have this in a logical way, this conversation in a logical way. So exactly. the goal of this section is to get to this hook, right? So there's a couple things that you want to do. So one, let's go over like how to introduce yourself. I always recommend reducing or removing the surprise, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So every cold call is gonna start out with, uh, this is Jason with Blissful Prospecting. Yep. Hey Rashmi, Jason with Blissful Prospecting, right? And you can even do your full name. Some people have done some tests on that. Gong.io has some interesting data on using your full name. Hey, this is Jason Bay with Blissful Prospecting. Supposedly, there's some more authority with uh, last name. I, personally, I like just doing first name. Hey, this is Jason with Blissful Prospecting. I'm a really big fan of permission-based openers. Yep. So a permission-based opener, uh, Sandler uh, training, they kind of popularized the upfront contracts, right? Mm -hmm. But a permission-based opener, uh, and I listen to hundreds of calls every month, uh, and make a lot of these calls myself and eight or nine times out of 10, when we do a permission-based opener, the person will typically say, okay, cool. What do you got? So that might sound something like this. This is my go-to, uh, Hey, Rashmi, this is Jason with Blissful Prospecting. Look, I know I probably caught you in the middle of something, but do you have about a minute? I could tell you why I'm calling. You could let me know if you want to keep chatting. Yeah. So Chris was asking in the chat, how does permission-based opener work for you? That's a variation that you guys can do. So the kind of formula for that intro is there's some sort of, oops, there's some sort of empathizing with the person. There's a request for time. And then there's like your ask for permission. This part is where you can have a lot of fun. I like to use, hey, I know I probably caught you in the middle of something, right? Yeah. That's oftentimes what I'll say. This other part too, if I call someone in the morning, so if I call someone first thing in the morning, eight o'clock, I might say something like, uh, hey, Rashmi, I know I'm catching your first thing in the morning here at eight o'clock and you probably got a ton of meetings the rest of the day, so I'll make this quick. Do you have 30 seconds I could tell you why I'm calling and then you can let me know if you wanna keep chatting? Yeah. 
Um, exactly. So some people are asking like Alex Higgins, you know, closed questions are definitely good for getting a straight up answer. Yeah, closed questions are okay to use at the beginning. And they're actually, a, a combination of the two is okay. This is this hook part is where you want to get to those kind of open-ended questions. Exactly. But in giving the prospect uh, an opportunity to opt in to the cold call, you're actually giving them some autonomy back. Someone mentioned Never Split the Difference by uh, uh, Chris Voss in yep. the chat. Same kind of thing here, right? By giving the person autonomy and allowing them to opt in to take your cold call, they're actually more likely to take your cold call. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, Dennis said that he's tried this opener and got a meeting, but for the second person to answer the phone, it's great. So I'll give it, give it to you one more time. You can keep it really simple. Um, hey, this is Jason with Blissful Prospecting. You know, I know I probably catch you in the middle of something, but do you got a minute for me to tell you why I'm calling? And then you can let me know if you want to keep chatting. Uh, another fun one that I'll give you too. I don't know if you've had people do this, Rashmi, uh, Rashmi is, uh, hey, this is Jason with Blissful Prospecting. Uh, just to be straight up with you, this is a cold call, uh -huh. but I was wondering if you had a minute for me to tell you why I'm calling and you can decide if you want to hang up or not, right? So you can have a little bit of fun, you know, with it too. Uh, so Daniel's saying, I haven't had any luck with this. What's an easy way to do this to avoid sounding salesy? Well, yeah. you tell me, does what I said sound salesy or not? It's, it's really about like the delivery, you know, Hey, I know I'm catching in the middle of something here, but you got a minute for me to tell you why I'm calling and you can decide if you want to hang up or not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I love that twist. And somebody was saying, you know, isn't this a closed ended question? This is the kind of place where a closed ended question makes sense. Because when somebody Yeah, there are going to be people that hang up or they say no, I'm too busy or they do, they just do. And that's fine. But the people who do say yes, they volunteer your time and they set up a productive conversation right there for you to for it to go in the right direction. Um, you can yeah force people to stay on the phone, but you can set, set it up in a way so that the ones who do get on, who do stay on the phone, they, they, they are already in a good frame of mind about how you've approached them. Yeah. I'm going to play something for you guys. Cause some people are like, Oh, my people would say, no, let me play a recording for you. Uh, cause I have recordings and I bleeped out the, uh, the prospect. Here, let me find one real quick. I have this. This would be kind of cool for you guys to listen to here. All right. I just found it. Okay. Let me share the audio real quick. So listen to this. Just listen to the first part. Hello. Hey, Quentin. This is John from uh, BombBomb. I'm cold calling you right now. It should take me about 30 seconds to let you know why I called. And about 30 seconds for you to tell if it's worth your time to talk to me or not. Does that sound fair? This is hilarious. I so I have like I'm breaking down this call in the recording. That's why you're hearing my voice again. So let's let's keep listening here. I love the fact that he said that this is a cold call. And he's also using the permission based opener where he's asking for time, allowing the person to opt in. So pretty textbook so far. <laughs> uh you've been chasing me. I'm actually admiring you, Jonathan, just so you know. <laughs> well, appreciate that. Uh uh, listen, you caught me at it. Okay, go for it. Let's let's talk real quick. Okay, cool. So, for me, what I care about is not whether something, uh, you know, like what my opinions are on it as a salesperson. I care about whether it works or not. I'm telling you, you guys, I listened to hundreds of cold call recordings. I've made thousands of these over my uh, sales career, and permission based openers work. Like they work. So for those of you giving me a hard time right now, try <laughs> it, okay? Try it, <laughs> okay? And we don't need to spend a bunch of time digging into that, but it's gonna feel uncomfortable if you've never done it before, but use it, it works, okay? So it's you're gonna remove saying, the surprise. Oh, go ahead, Rashmi, sorry. Someone was saying, you know, a short no is way more valuable than a long maybe. Uh, that's yep. a very interesting thing to say. And, you know, for some of those who are saying, oh, you know, the casual American friendly, you know, language doesn't translate well to other languages. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be this exact same thing. There's probably some other language cultural equivalent where you can like sort of bring that up, you know, in, yeah. in a way that makes sense. Yeah. So there might be some translation that you need to do if you're calling into different countries. 
Um, but think about how can I allow the prospect to opt into this? Yeah, James is saying he's used this with Filipino sales team to get 75% success rate. You guys, it, it just works. Try it 10 times. And if it doesn't work, email us and we'll try to help you out, okay? So the next part you can do when the person says, yeah, you got 30 seconds, that's where you can do your pitch. You know, we don't have a bunch of time because we got another five minutes or so, but you essentially want to do problem result. So I think where people make a mistake is when they give their pitch, they say something like this. <laughs> uh, they say, yeah, we're a solution, uh, a sales engagement solution. We work with Fortune 1000 companies and we're blah, 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 blah. They talk all about themselves. If instead you talk about the problem and how you help them with it, that's a much better way uh, to do it. So I work with a company that helps other companies outsource their customer support. So like when they cold call, they do something like this. Uh, hey, Rashmi, thank you. So the reason I was giving you a call is that I was actually on your guys' site and I noticed that when we engaged with the chat, it took about 12 hours to get a response. And what we're seeing with long response times is that customers are more likely to buy your competitors' products. So what we're helping companies do is increase those response times without adding headcount so they don't lose customers, uh, they don't lose customers to the competition. You cool if I ask you a couple of questions to see if this is relevant to you? Right, yeah. so I'm gonna go problem, result, and then I'm gonna go into my questions. And you can prompt this with, with a question or you can just go straight into what I call question stacking. So this is where some of those open-ended questions around the problem might be a really big thing. So I'm just looking at the uh, chat here. Can you help with a pitch for a fleet services company looking for clients? <laughs> Uh, Funk, we don't have enough time on this call for me to help you with your custom pitch, uh, but we'll send out some resources after this to help with that. So I'm going to do the pitch and then I'm going to ask them, hey, is it cool if I ask you a couple questions and see if this is relevant to you? Or I might just start asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So an example of a more open-ended question is you can stack in the uh, areas that you'd normally focus on. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, you could say something like this. You could say, uh, hey, normally when I talk to sales leaders like you, they're typically focused on a couple things with their reps, um, either you know, getting them to pick up the phone more and make more cold calls so they can land more meetings, or they're getting really low response rates to their emails, and they're trying to increase efficiency so that people can send less emails and get more meetings. I'm curious, which, which one of those two things are you focused on? Right, so I can ask a question like that to kind of filter what they might be interested or focused on. I could also build in a problem statement. So I could say, hey, Rashmi, you know, I talk to a lot of sales development leaders and one thing that I hear constantly is that the reps send out a lot of emails, but they only get like a 1% response rate. And it's just a lot of work for very little responses. What are you guys seeing right now? Or how are your emails performing right now? Right. So I'm gonna ask those open-ended questions and I'm gonna go a little bit fast here for you guys because we're almost out of time. The next part is you're gonna summarize. So once you ask these questions and you find some sort of focus that they have or some sort of pain point, I'm gonna summarize that. Hey, Rashmi, what I heard was that you guys are sending out a lot of emails right now. The response rate's pretty low. You've tried a bunch of different things and you'd love your team to make more cold calls. Did I miss anything? So that's the question I'm going to ask here. I'm going to summarize, and then I'm going to ask, did I miss anything? So yeah. I'm allowing her to drive this part of the call. She should be talking the most for these next five, uh, one to five minutes. And then what I can do is schedule time. So I ask, hey, did we? Did I miss anything? No. Well, hey, these sound exactly like things uh, that we might be able to help you out with. Can I make a quick suggestion? She says, yes. Um, how about we unpack this a little bit more when I'm not cold calling you in the middle of your day? Do you have your calendar handy? And then we can schedule time. And then we want to confirm. So we're going to send invite on the call. And then we're going to confirm the agenda. So I'm going to repeat back again what I heard. And I'm going to let Rashmi know what we're going to talk about is your low response rates with your team, how you'd like them to make more cold calls, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna make it about you. So with this intro, 
big thing. If you're not doing this, you guys, permission-based opener, listen back to this recording if you need to. Like, if you're not using this, I guarantee you, this is like a way you can change your cold calling game, like overnight. Like you'll see better results doing this. And when you go to talk about your solution, talk about the problem that people like them are having and then the result. And then make sure to ask two or three questions around potential challenges that they're having. And mm -hmm. then make sure when you go to confirm and close, a couple of people want to hear the closer again. So when you go to confirm, you're going to summarize what they said and say, hey, did, did I miss anything? Awesome. Can I make a quick suggestion? Yeah. How about we unpack this a little bit more when I'm not cold calling you in the middle of the day? That's lovely. So you Do you have your calendar handy? Then, and then, then you can go on and schedule it. Then you're right in the middle of a conversation and you're saying, yeah, here's, here's the thing we're already talking about. When's the right time for us to talk about it properly? Right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, you guys, we're out of time uh, today. I'm going to send out the recording to everyone after this. So sometime later today, you'll get the slides as well. And um, I would love to know you guys here. Let me drop a few things in the chat. If you want to check out Apollo, there's a link in the chat there. I left some resources to check out more stuff that we're working on. And Rashmi, what do you want to leave uh, everyone with? Thank you so much for all the prep work that you did for this and all the great information. And there's a whole other half of the deck we didn't get to talk about. So you're going to have some goodies there in the slides. But uh, what do you want to leave people with? Yeah, um, it's, it's mainly this. I think that... Uh... You can you can basically this this is an this is an opportunity. Cold calling is a tremendous, amazing opportunity for people to really, really learn things that, about their market, for you know, about their customer, about their day to day world. Really feels feel what it's like to talk to a person who's extremely busy trying to solve a problem that maybe you can have to solve them with. So, with a mindset of experimentation and learning, you're going to get a lot more of this time. Than, than you would, you know, if, if, you, if you were focused just on the sale. So yeah, go, go in with the mindset to learn and, and, and enjoy that time that you get in front of your customer. No, I love it. I don't know, Rashmi, if you can see the chat, but look at all the kind stuff that people are saying. You guys, uh, thank you so much for the participation, everyone. This is really cool to see all the messages in here. Um, so thank you for spending an hour out of your day, you guys, and Rashmi, thank you for spending an hour out of your day as well to, uh, to help us out here. We'll send everything out to you guys afterwards later today so that you have it and have a good rest of the day. Let us know how your cold calls go. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, everyone.